Um, hello, so today we are going to do this problem, which is um, the second problem of biweekly contest 121, this week's biweekly. Um, so basically we have an array and we have an integer k, and we can apply an operation any number of times. And that operation is basically flipping one bit in one of the numbers. Flipping, of course, is if it's zero, you flip it to one. If it's one, you flip it to zero. Um, and the goal is to return the minimum number of operations we need to make so that XORing all the elements of the array gives us the number k that we get um, as a parameter here. So in this specific case, for example, um, we can choose to flip one bit in three, okay? And so, um, so we can flip, for example, the first bit to get zero, one, zero. And then we choose to flip the first one um, to get flip the first bit here. So we get one, one, zero. Okay, and then if we XOR all of these, so 6 XOR 1, XOR 2, XOR 4, that gives us 1, which is equal to um, the k that we want. How many operations did it take us? Just two operations, and so we return it. So that's the idea here. Now, how can we tackle this? Um, okay, so the first thing we need to think about is just make sure you we know the XOR operator, what it does. So XOR basically is if the bits are different, then the, va uh, the result would be 1. If they are the same, it would be 0. So that means basically 1 XOR 0 is 1 because they are different. 0 XOR 1 is 1 because they are different. But if they are the same, 0 0, that's 0, 1 XOR 1. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm putting OR, bitwise OR, it's actually, it's XOR. Um, 1 XOR 1 is 0. Okay, so this is the main thing to understand about um, about XOR. Now let's take the first example that we have here um, and explore it a little bit. So two in binary representation is zero, one, zero, one. So the array is two, one, three, four, and k is equal to one. Um, two is, uh, one is zero, zero, one, three is zero, one, one, four is, one zero zero and then we have k which is zero zero one so the first observation to think about is we are flipping bits and we want the minimum number of operations so the first thing to think about is for each element it only makes sense to flip a bit once like for example here we can flip this to one but it doesn't make sense to flip it again to zero because if if flipping it again to zero, we may just have as well kept it as zero, right? So only one operation is enough, okay? The other thing to think about is, so we need a one, right now for k, for this, the XOR of all of these to be equal to k, we need one in the first position and we need zero in all of these positions. So let's, the problem says, th th this is for the XOR result. So let's first just XOR before doing any modifications and see what, what happens. So if we XOR 0 XOR 1, that's 1. 1 XOR 1, that's 0. 0 XOR 0, that's 0. 1 XOR 0, that's um, 1. 1 XOR 1, that's 0. 0 XOR 0, that's 0. 0 XOR 0, that's 0. And then XOR 0 again, that's 0 XOR 1, that's 1. Okay? So you can see the difference here is between it and k is here and here, okay? So how do we change one of these bits so that we get one here? Well, we only need to change one because, because, if we, because XOR is associative, like if you do like x XOR y is equal to z, that means basically, um, so basically here we want zero XOR one, XOR one, XOR 0, we want to get, we want to change one of these to get 1. And this initially is 1, and this initially is, um, so this initially is 1, this initially is 1, so XORing these will give us 0. We only need one of these to become 0 for this to become 1, for this to become 1. Right now it's 0, so we only need to change one of these bits, or this, or this to get a 1, because if we do it, we will get a zero. And then when we XOR it with one, we will get a one. And so we only need to change one. And so we change this one, for example, to one. Now we have a zero and now we have a one, okay? So that's the key insight here is that if the d it, once we XOR all the element, if the bit is different than what we need for K, we can just um, replace one of the bits, just flip it, and that would be enough because 
because for XOR to give you a one, for any number of XORs to give you a one, you need a NAD number of ones because if you if you have no matter how many zeros you have, if you have um, just an even number of ones, then here you would get a one, and then if you XOR it, it will end up canceling it out and giving you zero. But if you have no matter how many zeros you have, if you have a one an odd number of times, one XOR zero would be one, and then when you do all of the even ones, that will give you a zero, and then when you XOR it with one, that would give you a one. Okay? So here, if it's zero, that means you had an even number of ones. When you flip one bit, now you have an odd number of ones, and now you get a one. Similar logic, if let's say this was one and we needed a zero, and K maybe was one zero like this, then in that case, we only need to change this to zero. How do we change it? We just need to add one, an additional one to make the count instead of odd, the count of one bit, instead of odd to make it even to get a zero, right? And so that's basically the key insight here is, let's just XOR all the element and see what's the difference with K. And if the bit is not the same, that means we need to change just one bit to change the, the value here. Okay, so that's the core idea. Now, we can of course do this by just converting to a string and just seeing that how many bits are different. That, that works, that's a good solution. Basically, XOR all the elements of the array, get the result, the binary representation, get the binary representation of K and see which bits are different. That's possible, but there is even a better way to do that actually, which is we can actually just do another XOR. Why? Because remember, XOR, if they are different, we'll get a one. If they are the same, we'll get a zero, right? And so if we do one zero, let's say this one here, we XOR it with K. So this is the XOR of the array. And this is the, the K. If they are different, we'll get a one. And so we want to count how many bits are different. And so we can just XOR the two and count how many one bits we get because by definition with XOR, one means the bits are different. And so we can just XOR and see here we get a one, we get a zero, we get a one. And so we can just count how many ones we have. And the number of ones is the actual, um, is the actual answer because that means what's different, which means what we need to change, the bits we need to change in the array to get K. Okay, so that's pretty much the idea here. Now let's cut it up and make sure it passes. Um, okay, so let's implement the solution. So what we said, we need the XOR of first of all the elements of the array. So that can be just like, let's call it X zero, and then we can just go through every number in the array and just XOR with A. XOR all of them together. Now we said that we just need to check um, different difference between in bits between X and K, and we can do that with XOR. Um, that's something to keep in mind for the difference of bits between two numbers you can use XOR um, and so here we just do X XOR K and now we just need to check how many bits we have that are set in X because a bit set after XOR means the the numbers that we XOR the bits we XOR were different and so in Python you can use bit count that's the simplest solution um, I'll show you how to do it if you are, if you don't want to use like a library function, but this passes. But if you don't want to use a binary, uh, a bit a binary function, you can just have like the count here equal to zero, which we would return at the end. But we'll just keep dividing by zero. Um, but d sorry, dividing by two, and each time we see if it was odd, that means there was a one bit set. If it was even, that means there was there was no bit set, right? And so that's what we do here. So while x is bigger than zero, we just do x divided by two. Um, and then to count, we just check if it was even, that means the bit was the last bit was set. And so we can just do it like this. Um, and that should be it. And we can submit. And that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, so that's it for this problem. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one. Bye.